God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Grace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is another wonderful day to come before you and uh, minister to you the Word of God. It is a privilege and an honor. Amen. We want to get back into this series uh, talking about the way of righteousness. The way of righteousness where we have discovered our sins have been forgiven once and for all. Forgiven to the fact that we were forgiven before we were born. Amen. Glory to God. This has been a very exciting teaching. And so I want to jump in this. This would be part five. I want to jump in this to where we can see that through this way of righteousness, we see uh, the believer receiving the Holy Spirit or the promise of Abraham. It is through this faith. It is through this righteousness of faith we have received the promise of the Holy Spirit. It's not through the working of the law, but it is through the promise, uh, 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 excuse me, it is through the righteousness of faith that we're receiving the Holy Spirit. It's through, this is through the way of righteousness that we're receiving the promise of Abraham. Glory to God, glory to God. So let's take a closer look at this. Let's go to uh, Luke, chapter 1, looking at verse number 77. And I want to deal here with um, Zacharias is saying something in the scriptures here. He is prophesying to those that are around after he has his son, John. So he says, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. So by the forgiveness of our sins, we have received the knowledge of salvation. Glory to God. Listen to that. It is by the forgiveness of our sins we have received the knowledge of salvation. Now, by the forgiveness, this by the forgiveness, not when you came and asked to be forgiven. This is not when you come to repent for forgiveness. This is by the act of Jesus on the cross, dying for our sins that we have the knowledge of salvation. Through the act of the cross, we have received the knowledge of salvation, the life that is in Christ Jesus. We have access to this life through this forgiveness that was granted at the cross where God demonstrated his righteousness, judging the ungodly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But let's also let's take another look at Acts 26. Here is when Paul is uh, testifying about his experience, about uh, Jesus encountering our Lord, our Savior. And he goes to say it like this here. He says, I will deliver you from the Jewish people. Paul said, this is what Jesus said to him. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles, from the Jewish people and as well as from the Gentiles, to whom I now send you, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Now let's take a closer look at this. I want us to see something. He says, he is sending Paul uh, to the Gentiles, uh, and also he is sending him, uh, he said also to the Jews, the Jews and the Gentiles. He says to, to, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. And when he jumps down here to say that they may receive the forgiveness of sins. So what is keeping them from receiving the forgiveness of sins? Darkness. They're in darkness to where they cannot receive the forgiveness of sins. Now, he is not saying uh, that they need to come and get forgiven, that they need to repent for forgiveness. He said receive it. They're in darkness because they do not know that their sins have been forgiven. When you don't know your sins have been forgiven already, you're in darkness concerning forgiveness. You're in darkness concerning uh, 
the righteousness of God that's been executed at the cross. You in darkness concerning that Jesus is the Lamb of God who has paid the sin debt. You in darkness. But he says that turn them from darkness to light. And how is he going to do that? By ministering Jesus being the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who's already died. So he's already died and been resurrected. So he is ministering to them the grace of God that Jesus has already died. And so that they can receive the forgiveness of sins that is in Christ Jesus. So we see here that through this way of righteousness that our sins have been forgiven, have already been forgiven, it opens up light unto us. That light, understanding that my sins have already been forgiven, I can receive forgiveness because the debt is already paid. That's bringing them out of darkness. When you're still practicing under the law to be right with God, you're in darkness concerning the forgiveness of your sins. When you are trying to be justified in the sight of God, you're in darkness concerning the forgiveness of your sins. Are you hear what I'm saying? You're walking in darkness when you're still trying to get forgiven of your sins. We need to receive it the application has already happened at the cross that we may receive it in his life. When we came to him for life, we received the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Glory to God. So what's being said here, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness. You're going to turn them from unbelief concerning their sins. Oh, my, my, my. The Jews practice being forgiven through the blood of an animal. The Gentiles, whatever, whatever they practice, or what, I don't know what God they served at this time, but, but they were in darkness concerning God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness that is in Christ that have turned them from darkness to light. He says, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and an inheritance. So, so we're forgiven to receive. We receive forgiveness and also that we may receive an inheritance. The inheritance is the promise of the Holy Spirit. The inheritance is the promise of Abraham, the Holy Spirit, that we will receive the Spirit of God that is in Christ Jesus. That is our inheritance. But there's an order of it to where that we need to get a hold of. That sins had to be forgiven before life can be given. Not a back and forth of forgive, uh, forgive me every time I sin. No. Sins had to be removed. The debt had to be paid before life could be given. Our inheritance is the the Holy Spirit living in us, and we're becoming what we have become the children of the living God. Glory to God. Can't you see that? Hallelujah. Let's take another look at another scripture. This is where in Galatians Paul is dealing with um, uh, Christ being redeemed. He says here, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone who hangs on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham, listen, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. The Gentiles is talking about me and you before we came to Christ. But this has happened already for us, knowing that Jesus, the Christ, he is our redeemer. His blood paid the redemption for our sins. We understand that. But also, it says that, uh, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. The blessing of Abraham. It is the spirit of the living God. It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would not come upon us if we were still in need of being forgiven. If we have not been justified and made right with God, the Holy Spirit 
will not come upon us and cause us to be sons and daughters. But oh, praise be to God. The work is finished. It's already done. The Holy Spirit is waiting for us to receive what has already taken place. Glory to God. So he says, that the blessing of Abraham might come up on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we're receiving the promise of the Spirit, or we have received the promise of the Spirit through faith. Through what faith? Through the righteousness of faith. Through the righteousness of faith that has justified us, that our sins have been dealt with once and for all been made right in God's sight, no longer counting sins against us, that we can receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. So it is, it is written and it is recorded. It is to be received that God has justified us and made us right with himself. So we see here that through the way of righteousness, this revelation, this understanding of how we got here, our identity, where we're standing, it has come through this way of righteousness that is in Christ Jesus. Not through the law of my own thinking, of my own way of doing things, but no, this is the way it has come to us. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Can no one get to the Father but by me? He has made us alive unto God that we can cry out, Our Father. Daddy, Father, the Holy Spirit living in us, what? Confirming, witnessing to us that we are the children of the true and living God. Amen. One more scripture, then we're going to get out of here. This one here, Galatians 3, 2 and 4. Something Paul says to the Galatian believers here because they were bewitched, they have come to a place to where they were uh, not sure anymore of what the teaching that Paul had ministered to them. And he says here in verse number two, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did we receive the spirit by the works of the law by the, or by the hearing of faith. Of course, as believers, we have received the Spirit by the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith, that's how we receive the Spirit. The hearing of faith allows us to see where God has taken Jesus again to the cross, paid the sin debt in full. It is finished. Judgment has taken place. God is satisfied. The law is satisfied. God raises him up from the dead. Jesus says, preach forgiveness in his name. Proclaim it in his name. Preach it and proclaim it that we may receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. Knowing that we are forgiven, knowing that we have been forgiven before we were born allows us to receive the spirit of the living God and walk in it in the knowledge of what we have received. How did you receive the spirit? Was it through the obedience of the law that the spirit of God fell on you? No. It was through the hearing of faith that you've been justified and made right in his sight. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for stopping by, for sharing with us in this session. The way of righteousness. Wow. The way of righteousness has revealed to us a Father who loves us unconditionally and who is with us and will never leave us. Amen. God bless you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. So you can get our next teachings on this way of righteousness. God bless you and grace to you and your